Good morning. Welcome to Books at the Bottom of the Stairs. My name's Lorene. I'm going to introduce you to my two good, 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 good friends, Sandy and Cheryl. And we're here to talk about East of Eden by John Steinbeck. And no, it's not the morning. It's seven o'clock in the evening in Halifax. And we are at Sandy's house and we are going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we're all okay. trying to cram figure out yeah. why we, what, pro, what profound thoughts we had on the, the yeah. page, pages yeah. in the Yeah, I put little tabs. Yeah, I thought of For it. things that, oh, I have to remember this. That's and right. now I have to completely read both pages <laughs> to try and figure out, now what was important on this page yeah. that I wanted to talk about? There are some <laughs> things like, and I guess, so how far is everybody? I finished mine. Yeah. I know, I'm not bragging, I'm just telling the truth. Speaking my truth. And I am half. Okay. I am just past Samuel dying. Okay. <laughs> Spoiler! Uh -oh. Damn it! Oh, oh. Because you know what I was going to talk about? Yeah. When I fell in love with Samuel. Yeah. Okay. I love Samuel. Well, I shouldn't have said that. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. I'm sorry. You know what? I read this book many, many years ago, yeah. and I knew he probably was going to die, but I couldn't. And I read it years ago, and when I read it, like, I know I read it and loved it, but I read it, and I remember Adam... But that's about it. Like, I didn't remember any of the plot line at all. Mm -hmm. I just, I just loved it all over again. And so I can't even say, like, sometimes I read a book um, at a different age. Like, that's where I fell in love with them. Okay. Yeah, I like reading a book that I've read before, and I love it on a whole different level, in a different way. Mm -hmm. But this one, I loved it all over again, but like brand new. You know, like I don't really remember why I loved it the first time. I couldn't really articulate it except that I loved that book. Yeah. Um, anyway. This is a first read for me. Is oh, it? seriously? Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I remember the episode uh, where the mom goes up into the plane. I love so, I fell in love. Maybe because I'm, my background is, is Irish or something. Yeah. But this is when I fell in love. Okay. with Samuel. <clears throat> Men from all over the district brought him brought him tools to mend and to improve. Besides, they loved to hear Samuel talk of the world and what it was thinking, um, of the poetry and the philosophy that were going on outside the valley. He had a deep, rich voice, good both in song and in speech, and while he had no brogue, there was a rise in lilt and a cadence to his talk that made it sound sweet in the ears of the ta taciturn Farmer, taciturn, taciturn, taciturn. taciturn. Yeah. farmers from the valley. They brought whiskey too, and out of sight of the kitchen window, <laughs> and out of the disapproving eye of Mrs. Hamilton. Uh, they called him a comical genius and carried his stories, carried his stories carefully home. Yeah. And they wondered at how the stories spilled out on the way, for they never sounded the same repeated in their own kitchens. Yeah, mm. I love that. So yeah, good. so beautiful. Really cool. I love the the kind of the imagery of it. Yeah, you know that yeah. they were taking his stories home and they were dropping things right. along the way. And, yeah. and that's so true because I will try and, you know, recreate the story, maybe that one of you have said, and it never quite turns out. It's like me of course, jokes. I'll be laughing my head off. That's but. right. You know the real truth. <laughs> 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 yeah, I love the, um, uh, I love him too, but I, I love that you read that because it reinforces everything I loved about him. Mm -hmm. Um, like wisdom without trying to be wise, right? Just living, living this, um, I don't know, like a life of just joy, right? Just, he's he was a man fulfilled, himself, but yeah. yeah, yeah, not in the way we may think of things. Exactly, that's right, mm -hmm. yeah. He was able to find um, a joy in life despite the farm that they had mm -hmm. or the ranch, but it was, um, it, w it was interesting that we're introduced to him first through the farm and through its its um, sort of hopeless landscape in mm -hmm. a sense, yeah. but yet in the face of all of that, he's still able to find real joy and beauty in the um, in the processes mm -hmm. and in the the labor itself was so whether whether they ever got it to a really good farm or not, it's that they had worked as a family 
to build the barn or to build the house or whatever the case was. It was mm -hmm. the, the walls were part of the family. In a way, it doesn't say that in the book, but yeah. that's the feeling you get, you take away from it. Is uh, The walls were part of the family. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. that he, and the gravel was part of the family. Like right. It wouldn't have he been was, the same family with a different landscape. It yeah. was like the farm was personified almost. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was part of, it was a character in the book. It's loved. The yeah. farm is a character in the book. Yeah. 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 It was and loved. it would have been a different family if it had been easy. Because I think, and, isn't he offered yeah. like to go and work Adam's land yeah. like at some point yeah. and he just says no he would never leave that yeah. Yeah. and even for his children they don't want to leave the... so where so where are you in the book because we don't want to spoil it for you oh no. what's the last wait, wait, big uh, event um, oh she's just Kathy's just having a baby oh oh yeah she's just she's just in labor oh oh and Lee yeah. is just come say come come quick yeah so I think Samuel's going over there, isn't he? Yes, he's going he's over. He's going over, yeah. yeah. That's a very interesting, intense moment in the book, I think, that... Um, when Samuel goes over, when she has the... The whole, the whole birth process is quite interesting. Okay. Um, well, you can... I'm sure it's not spoiling anything for you to... No, I've already read one, so okay. go... Oh, go just, no, I, I just don't want us to go too much past that, because we can do part B. Mm -hmm. um, but she's not going to be a loving parent. No. Is pretty... Shock of shock. Yeah. <laughs> so she's not uh, the most amiable pregnant woman. She's just, she's fighting the birth process all the way through. It's like, I'm not, I'm just, this is not my reality. I am not having children. Right. This is coming out of my body, but not with my consent. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's hard enough to do with consent. Yeah. I can't imagine doing it. It's just anger, something to anger. be gotten over oh. with, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and to get on to the rest of her life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I had a question about Kathy because we we meet her when she's quite young, and there's nothing really in her life that um, triggers her particular personality yeah. traits that I can see, or I that. I was just gonna ask that. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember why she is the way she is. Was she was she not loved? I mean, why? I don't think they ever explain why she is. No, who she is and. For no. me, she's sort of like the personification of true and pure evil. Yeah. Like, yeah, just, yeah, she is the evil. She's like the serpent. Or not, I can't even say like the serpent, because I'm sure the serpent had redeeming qualities in the Garden of Eden. But, you know, like she, there's, you know, nothing um, uh, at this point. Yeah. And I, what I found kind of, I'm just going to focus on the fire for a second. Mm. Um, what I found fascinating was um, how competent she was. As a murderess mm. in her early years, like yeah. um, it was a fairly sophisticated crime mm. that she manages to pull off, yeah. and 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 you know I, I quite often I'm thinking of other things while I'm reading a book and I just how significant uh, the lack of forensic science was mm. into people being able to pull that kind of a crime off or change their lives or change their identity or so on. Mm. Like, you can't really get away with that kind of stuff anymore because they or would be able to tell, you know, where was the fire started and what yeah, kind yeah. of flammables were used and there wasn't a third body. You know what bothered me about her character? Many things, but what was most disturbing was her patience. Yeah. Just biding her time. Just biding her time, yeah. knowing that she's going to come out ahead and just waiting. Yeah. Almost like like a a leopard or a jackal, you know, in yeah. the grass, just waiting for that moment, that perfect moment yeah. to change. Well, I think that's what got me too, is that it's not like a crime of passion. It's not in the moment. And it's so drawn out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it's just pure, right? There's no, there's not a flicker of, mm, maybe I should, it's just, yeah. yeah. She doesn't doubt herself ever. No. no. She may regroup. But it's not, it's not because of doubt, it's because um, circumstances didn't quite play out to her full expectations, right. so I'm going to take a step back, reassess, yeah. and reapply yeah. the plan. Yeah. And it's just so, yeah. uh, the confidence is just so astonishing. I find that um, there's always a part of me that has a little bit of a, a glimmer of, of appreciation for the criminal mind like how did they think about that what was what were the thought processes and what was the goal and mm -hmm. and but with the parents death I was thinking to myself 
what exactly is her goal there? Because she's not really prevented from doing anything. And she mm -hmm. hasn't really tested the waters to mm -hmm. see yeah. how far they're going to let her go. Mm -hmm. Why did they have to be dead for her to move on to the next? Sure, why didn't she just leave? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So was she just, oh, I'd like to see a big fire? Well, she didn't even stick around for the fire. But so. did, was there any, mon I can't remember if there's any monetary. I don't think so. She just left. She left the house on fire and just left. Right. Yeah. So do, would you call her a, a sociopath? I would call her a psychopath. psychopath? Definitely a narcissist. Yeah. Um, well, that's kind of the. Yeah, that's kind of the question about her character too, because John Steinbeck is writing this before those those categories are really available. Oh, I yeah. never thought of that. You're right. Yeah. This is 1952. I think. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I think it was 1959. 59. Okay. Somewhere in there, and um, I read a little bit about the book process, and it took him ten years to write. And um, he was just taking notes along the way as he... No, it's 52. And, uh, yeah, so that would be just as mm -hmm. mental health and all those things are starting to come into um, popular knowledge, maybe? Mm -hmm. I don't know how much he would know. And certainly, sociopath and psychopath, I don't know when they were first termed. Mm -hmm. But I think that he sees her more in terms of... Um, pure good and pure evil. Mm -hmm. mm. As you say. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it is. Um, I know I, I love it so much that I'm just sitting here rereading it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. I'm, I have an interesting, well, to me it's an interesting question. Neither of you guys was really raised in any kind of a formal church setting. No. And you had some kind of connection into the Bible as a sort of document that was running alongside yeah. your worlds, but it wasn't like it wasn't a primary document for you guys. Yeah. How much, by, by not having a very deep knowledge of Genesis, how much are you tracking that story? Is it something that you're really, like... Mm. Tied into it all? I'm not. No. No. I'm just Should I be? No. Is, this, is there like a correlation here? Like a yeah, there's a huge correlation. Ah, but really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's Adam and Eve, and, mm -hmm. and there's Adam Trask, so, yeah. and um, finding his perfect mate by his description. But she's oh, and she was sins, evil. Right? She's oh, my evil. God. This makes it even better. And they have the sons, <laughs> Caleb, and, Caleb and Aaron, who were Cain and, A and Abel. Oh! Right? Damn it! Yeah. Well, that's you see, if I had more of the religious wild. background, I probably would have picked up on that. But that's that's that yeah. makes it even more. Now I want to reread yeah. the parts from the beginning again. Yeah. With that, because there are a couple of references to Genesis along the way, but I don't know where they start. I think it was more that see, I was, they, that I could have missed them, but when they're naming. Yes, but I think there might have been a bit of reference there? Yeah. a little bit before because we start yeah. to see it yeah. between Adam and Charles. See, and that's, I guess, where I didn't see it, because Adam and Charles are, like, Adam was the first man, so the Adam and Charles, I mean, the bad, the bad and the good, and the, mm -hmm. the good and the evil, and yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the story of Genesis includes the uh, story of Cain and Abel after they've been expelled from the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. and um, I think that's the part that Steinbeck is particularly interested in. Um, but, uh, and this is just a piece of trivia, is that the title East of Eden is, means that the Garden of Eden's only doorway faced east. Mm. And so in order to be expelled, they had to go east out of the garden. Mm. Okay. So East of Eden means you're outside of the garden. Oh, okay. So you're in the land of sin. Mm. Okay. And you're in the land of, you. I don't know exactly what you have to do to get back in. But at that point, there's one of the angels is set in front of the door to protect it with a sort of flame and stuff like that. Well, then mm -hmm. and I never really understood the whole thing then, because I thought Eden was gone. Like, that when Adam and Eve mm -hmm. were, like, out of there, that Eden never really existed anymore. That it was, you know, you're forced to leave the garden, but did anybody actually get back in the garden? Well, so far not, because mm -hmm. man hasn't, mankind hasn't been redeemed. Oh, okay. But Eden still exists as... Oh, as okay. um, 
as an idea. Right. Yeah. But I don't know, like, you know, I don't know because this is not a big exploration for me, but I don't know whether we, whether heaven is in the Garden of Eden or mm -hmm. that's where we sprang from and then mm -hmm. we go to, I don't know, but it's just, um, what I hadn't realized is that East of Eden actually in itself yes. was a metaphor mm -hmm. for the world of good and evil mm -hmm. and Where choosing to go. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm glad that you do our research. That's wonderful. <laughs> I kept really, thinking, you know, I should know more about the Bible exactly for that reason. Is that even though I really don't believe yeah. the way the Bible, <coughs> some of the things it says, yeah. but the Bible is is referenced in so many books. Yeah. Yeah. And if you know the Bible, you can pick up on mm -hmm. it. It's so much deeper. Yeah, the books. Yeah, the story. Yeah, it's interesting what kind of a lens we're looking at this from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think if we were like strongly feminists and political right now, we would be taking it in a totally different kind of light. Where we would go, we would try and find a way to be sympathetic to Kathy. Whereas I would, I think I would have to work very hard to be sympathetic to Kathy. Yeah. Um, in fact, what I but what I will say that I took from it overall was I kept, you know, I obviously dog-eared four different pages. I have no idea why I dog-eared them, but if I were given half an hour to be quiet, maybe I would. Right. But um, I'll try to sort of come up with a more comprehensive thought process for the ending of this when we've all read the whole thing. Yeah. But overall, what I kept coming back to was his just love of humanity. Just his, he cares, like he, it's the love that is, I mean, there's so many bad things that happen here, mm -hmm. but because somebody said to me, oh, you're reading the East Eden, I just remember that was a really depressing book, and I thought, I don't know, I guess there's just this love, yeah. and um, like, what was the, another one of my favorite, Fine Balance by Rohinja Mystery, it's one of my favorite books, mm -hmm. well, there's like so much awfulness, and poverty, and hurt and struggle and but it, I love that book because through it all was just this thread of joy mm -hmm. in living and life and mm -hmm. yeah well it's to another Steinbeck Mice and Men that is a yeah. dark yeah I had a hard time getting through that book I love is that the Mice one Steinbeck. no no I'm thinking of Cannery Row sorry Mice and Men Mice and Men that's where the um I, excuse me, it's, it was a long time ago that I read it, but the um, there's a, a man who's, who's slow, developmentally slow. Yeah. Oh, yes. And, and what the people, and, and they, they try and frame him mm -hmm. for, uh, I think, a rape mm -hmm. of a young black girl, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Is it not a black girl? And sort of no, 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 that's, no, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It was a young girl, mm -hmm. and they framed him. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's I, I just remember wanting to put it down mm -hmm. because it was so disturbing. What the people can do to what people can do mm -hmm. to each other. Yeah. If they have the ability, if they if they realize mm -hmm. they're superior or they think they're superior mm -hmm. to someone else. Yeah. The depths yeah. they can go to. Yeah. And then people start getting behind them. A, a, a person that is generally a good person. There's a mob of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once once everyone starts to believe, yeah, the person who's actually evil, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of easy to go over yeah. to the dark side because everyone starts to believe it. Yeah, yeah, and I don't really know why we start to believe it. The evidence in front of us is such that that's like a, a no logical conclusion. But I think that there's a certain part of protecting yourself against the mob. Where was I going with that? I was going to backtrack to um, Adam and Charles mm -hmm. and Caleb, the dad Caleb. Was it Caleb? No, Cyrus. Cyrus. Yeah. Cyrus's inability to see the boys equally, mm -hmm. and just the physical trauma that he put Adam through, and yet Adam sort of remains innocent through the whole endurance test, and Charles just becomes more and more vicious. Mm -hmm. um, until he basically almost kills Adam. Yeah, vicious and then it, and, and more insular as he gets older mm -hmm. too, right? Yeah. So sort of hyper focus on, um, like he shrinks, almost shrinks down, whereas Adam decides, Adam 
tra travels. Adam, yeah. and as much as he's in distress and trying to find himself, I guess is what we say today, just dealing with his trauma. Um, yeah, was it Cyrus, was he trying to, seeing Adam as like the weaker child, therefore trying to, or was he the more, I can't remember, there was a specific reason why he was yeah. sent off to war, and was it to make him stronger? Yeah. Mm. I think it was, yeah. 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 Cause because Charles, because Charles he, he felt that Charles had the ability to be a soldier and to be kind of wild and undisciplined and would not pull back from it, whereas Adam could be more That's of... Right. Of, of a soldier, an right. idealistic soldier, yeah. and would not kill unnecessarily, and would right. be like the perfect instrument of war. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That man was wackadoodle. Yeah. Yeah. He really. I mean, he, he was more offensive. So far, I find him the most offensive character of all the ones we've encountered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he. Well, he didn't have a leg to stand on. Oh. <laughs> 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 but he was such a fake. And, and then to put the kids through so much torment based on a complete mm -hmm. self-aggrandizing. And then what shocked me was how he got becomes um, so important to the war, war yeah. machine yeah. based on nothing. He was spinning. Based on lies. He was spinning. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He, was, he was a shocking character, I thought. He was a serpent. Yeah. yeah. So. For self, just... You know, he. I don't feel like he cared about his sons. I guess they don't spend no. a lot of time. You know, so if we talk about him sending Adam off as the perfect war machine, how is that going to? Does that in any way help Cyrus? Like, why would mm -hmm. Cyrus do that? Is that to be able to say then that? Because Cyrus wasn't he. He started to spin his own tales, to spin mm -hmm. his own reality. And believing it and making himself up to be so much more than he was so maybe as part of that Adam is sent off to become this war machine to sort of prop up Cyrus's reputation as well mm -hmm. yeah. yeah no I agree I think it's like mm -hmm. he needed to live so vicariously yeah. through yeah. through Adam and Adam was not inherently able to meet whatever it was that Cyrus had envisioned for himself yeah. I felt so sick for Adam yeah. when he was in the army because he was, he, I don't know how he had the gumption to keep going. Yeah. I would have, you know, run away or something. Yeah. <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah. if you're not, if you're not prone to do the killing and not be affected by it, I would have thought somewhere along the way you'd get pretty seriously damaged. You would have had a leg. Numbing out, I guess. Yeah. Like moving forward and whether you have, what options do you have? Where can you run? Mm -hmm. Even in trying, I mean, he was a he was a um, a hero, but he wasn't. Yeah, it was it was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he traveled afterwards when he finally yeah. left the army. He traveled and and yeah. saw more of the world, and yet his worldview was not very not very broad. It was yeah. more like he was um, escaping something, but not really confronting. So why do you, I agree, and why do you think this huge, like, when Kathy is, is at, on the steps and he rescues her, like, why the big transformation there? I just found that fascinating that, like, that became his reason to be. He searched all over and lived this sort of non-entity of a life, really, yeah. and trying to find something, we assume, or to process, or, but... Now Kathy comes up and he's going to rescue her. Like everything went into that, and and it was wasn't real. So maybe not being able to deal with everything that was real, he could focus in on something like he couldn't see clearly. No, he couldn't see clearly at all. Okay. Yeah, if she sort of maybe she represented all the harm that he wanted to undo, mm -hmm. and he could fa maybe finally. But he didn't see her as, oh, I guess that she was harmed, right? To be able to bring some kindness and some love uh, and charity. I took it as protection. Yeah. He felt like he could protect, he could protect her, her for yeah. the first time. Yeah. He didn't even protect himself, no. you know, from his brother. No, really. <clears throat> but he wanted to protect her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when she, wa when she comes up the staircase, she can't have been beautiful. No. It, and she can't have been image that he had in his mind about a beautiful woman but um, she just morphed into 
she morphed into that in his head. Mm -hmm. Don't really know what she looked like in real life, but um, she just... Yeah, I, I see her in a way as, as the pivotal point for all the damage that he had done and he was mm -hmm. trying to hmm. fix it, but yet he's fixing something that's inherently evil, so he's really, he's really missed. Yeah. He's not fixing something that was innocent and... Um, mm -hmm. What's that uh, that word like? In the wrong place at the wrong time. He's yeah. he's trying to fix some woman who, uh, wrong phrase, but deserved what she got. Like it's not right. surprising that she. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I I'm just us talking. Mm -hmm. I always thought he's just so in love with her. He wants to protect her. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, if you really love someone. And they were telling you, no, I don't want to go to California. Yeah. No, I don't want to do this. Yeah. He didn't listen. No. He did not hear her at all. Yeah. And if you really loved someone, you would take their feelings, their you know, thoughts yeah. into account. Yeah. But yeah. he never did. So well, does he really love her? But it's also like of the time, like with she's a woman, so she doesn't have a brain. Mm. Right? Like she's she's a woman. Right. And She's also like from the time he met her, she was vulnerable and weak and frail, and so it's like a kitten in the box. And like you're gonna feel like you know what's best for this this creature. You're gonna you know even though you make oh no <laughs> protest, you miss that. But you don't want to do it. Oh, but you don't know what's good for you, and so mm -hmm. everything will be fine. Everything will be good, and yeah, yeah, it's like a like a an object, I guess. Is really which yeah and is that because of Adam and who he is or is it partly because of just the time that the woman doesn't have a say yeah. have a say but he didn't feel controlling so it never felt like it was you will come with me it was like no it'll be great you know we'll, did he, did he force? Hmm. I don't I don't think he ever really listened but they never really had a conversation about it she just at the one time at a fairly inopportune moment, I think, were they getting on the train or off the train? They were, they were somewhere where it was not exactly a point of negotiation. Said, um, I'm not going to stay here. Yeah. And I think before that she said, I don't want to go. But mm -hmm. she oh, didn't yeah, pursue it there, in any she, way. Yeah, when they got there, she said, I'm not staying. Yeah. She made it clear to him. Yeah. yeah. And yet then she does stay, doesn't she? She goes to yeah. Selena's. And starts her. Oh, but she doesn't stay with but, him. But yeah. no, but she didn't want to be in California, and yet that's where yeah. she stayed. So that's. I thought that was an odd choice on her half, behalf. But maybe that has more to do with the plotting. I guess Johnny will tell us in a few pages. Do you? I couldn't pick, pick down the timing, but are the twins? Do you think they're Charles's twins, or are they Adam's twins? So she sleeps with Charles just before they head off. Mm -hmm. right? She gives Adam the sleeping potion and then goes and sleeps with Charles. Hmm. Mm. We'll never know. I hope we do know at some point. Yeah, he's kind of deluded. I just found it the you same. See, I, for some reason, I, I think they're Charles's twins. But yeah. do I know? No. Yeah. I, I don't think we know irrevocably, but I think there's there's a it becomes a point of discussion through through the book, so... She's um, just so evil, but <laughs> she didn't really care if if he if they were or they weren't. It was irrelevant to her. It was just another. Um, if it turned out that Charles was the father, at the time that she had sex with him, mm -hmm. it would just be another weapon that she could use mm -hmm. to hurt Adam. Like mm -hmm. so, whether yeah, I I think the. I want to ask you guys questions about that. Yeah. I'm not going to. Um, yeah, it says, uh, whatever Kathy may have been, she set off the glory in Adam. His spirits rose flying and released him from fear and bitterness and grants of memories. The glory lights up the world and changes it the way a star shell changes a battleground. Perhaps Adam did not see Kathy at all, so lighted was she by his eyes. Burned in his mind was an image of beauty and tenderness, a sweet and holy girl, precious beyond thinking, clean and loving, and that image was Kathy to her husband. Nothing Kathy did or said could warp Adam's Kathy. She said she did not want to go to California, and he did not listen because his Kathy took his arm and started first. So bright was this glory that he did not notice the sullen pain in his brother. You see the glint in his 
but he's not. And so she just kind of, he just is his own, own fantasy world where so yeah. she said, let's go. <laughs> How did you find that so fast? Yeah. I just, I don't know, just did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and then she discovers she's pregnant and he doesn't, yeah. The other character I found kind of interesting, um, I can't remember now exactly her name, Mrs. Hamilton, Samuel's wife, Liza. Liza, Liza yeah. right. She was interesting in that she was so, um, she was so clear in just what was the message, what was the purpose, what were the goals. Mm -hmm. um, there was no fannying about for her. No. It was very clear. Yeah. And uh, she, she didn't even really read the Bible for its message. She just read the Bible. You're and supposed to read the Bible. You just yeah. read the Bible. Yeah. That's yeah. your job. And yeah. so any kind of questioning that took place yeah. was not in her mind. No. And she was she was fascinating in yeah. her faith because yeah. it was rock solid. It's really unquestioned. And, it's, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yet she, she seemed like a pretty hard scrabble kind of a lady. Yeah. But um, as, as we discover fairly fairly soon after the boys are born, she um, she has a soft spot. Yeah. It's just the crabbiest, hard scrabble, you know, rocky soft spot you can mm -hmm. imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but as time goes by, she just, and all, all the events that take place, she just never wavers. Mm -hmm. And even with her own kids all kind of going off hither mm -hmm. and yon as they get older, it's just nothing really distresses her. She's always able to somehow align it back to this very simple faith that she's got. She's very much the opposite of Kathy, mm -hmm. except that right. she's not um, she's not out there doing particular good. Mm -hmm. She's not actually balancing. She's good. She's doing what God told her to do. She needed to do. Yeah. But I don't think it's like without caring either. That no. It's caring, but um, because later on she finds some sort of joy in her older age kind of thing too and softening I think that yeah. a lot of us older people apparently will become softer as we get older but um <laughs> yeah. But yeah she's doing what she's supposed to do without question and then I want to my brain wants to say without thought but I think there's thought there it's just so utilitarian and this is the way life is yeah and we're headed straight there to the road of glory yeah so I just need to keep on keeping on until I yeah. get to there yeah, yeah. But it's, and it's not bitter, no. except for when the couch, when Tom straps the couch, yes. the settee, the precious settee, mm. to the, um, maybe right there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that was I'm thinking definitely missionary position for this woman. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, nothing yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. In the yeah. dark, absolutely. with her pajamas. Yeah, up to right. Her. But yeah. also, there's got to be, I mean, Samuel speaks, Samuel loves her, and she must love him. Mm -hmm. And she never, like, I don't feel like, and maybe I miss, didn't read it or don't remember it, that she was, I mean, she didn't berate him, but she would piss and moan about the hard scrabble life they have. But I feel like there was pride in his... His work ethic. Yeah. Yeah. In his mind, like the brilliant mind that he has to come up with all these inventions. But I kind of related to him because it's like all these great ideas and then it's like, whoop, and then they stop. Yeah. He, he applies for patents, doesn't he, or does he, he not? He does, but he doesn't yeah. get around to patents. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. One thing about Liza, I remember reading that when he and his sons came in from the fields, they had to, before they could sit at the table, she had to bless them. Remember that was in the morning? She bless them? Yeah. yeah. Oh, but she couldn't sit something? until, they couldn't sit oh. until Liza blessed yeah. them and then they could sit and start oh, the meal. Yeah. Well, she, I think she loved without sentiment. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. Is that, and yeah. uh, so I don't think she just has a really a vocabulary for it. She expresses her love through her hard work mm -hmm. and yeah. making sure it's all just hunky dory. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Her yeah. efficiency and her hard work. And, yeah. yeah. And probably a lot of pride in that, too. Yeah. So then I think Liza, I think that would be a Does it say what she is? Must be Presbyterian or Baptist or. Yeah, because somewhere, I don't know if you'll have bumped into it yet, but she decides that Lee, the Chinaman, mm -hmm. is Presbyterian. And That's so that right. makes him okay in okay. her eyes. Yes. Oh, really? After oh. the babies are born. Yeah. 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 Um, um, yeah, so as long as he's Presbyterian, 
He's it's okay. It's okay. It's That's not. Right. It's not going to be a disaster. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Cute. I love Lee. I love. Lee. Oh, me too. Oh my god. Yeah. And the way he and Samuel, their relationship. Yes. Yeah. I love. Yeah. I think I just read that in the last week. Yeah. How they were. I think they're going to Adam Trask's farm. Okay. And he let go of the. Is it called pitch pigeon? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. And what an intelligent man he was, and it's like, oh, that's so lovely. That's right. I well, can understand how they don't, well, I think I can understand how they don't fit in. You know, the, he Chinese wouldn't fit in. Or the Lee doesn't fit in in his own. Fit in. Oh, yeah. With his own group of people. Yeah. And he doesn't fit in. Yeah, anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. So. But Samuel doesn't really fit in either. I mean, if he was to go back to Ireland, he wouldn't fit in with his, his home family either because. Sure. He's so much different than them with his. Mm -hmm. With his ideas and his um, philosophies, and and also the way he makes the work, like Liza, he's he's willing to put all kinds of work into something in order to make it, achieve, and it, like the digging of the wells and stuff. He sees that as a um, a um, of an expression of of love and joy as well. So you do got to do a lot of talking when you dig a well, for instance. That's right, because um, his yeah. son wanted to go and talk, speak for him, and he said, oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Is it 500 words for every foot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not. Samuel comes in. My late mother, Samuel, said she did not look around at him. Her spatula moved like a striking snake, and the hot cakes settled their white sides hissing on the soapstone. What time was it you came home, she asked. Oh, it was late, late. Must have been near 11. I didn't look, fearing to wake you. I did not wake him, Liza said grimly. And maybe you can find it healthy to rove all night, but the Lord God will do what he sees fit about that. It was well known that Liza Hamilton and the Lord God held similar convictions on nearly every subject. <laughs> <laughs> she turned and reached in a plate of hot, crisp, crisp hot cakes lay between Tom's hands. Samuel went his way, leaned down to his height, and kissed her round red cheek. Good morning, Mother. Give me a blessing. Bless you, said Liza automatically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good morning, Monday. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's right. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Sorry, I tried. Thank you. Thank so you. There's lots of other I'm alcoholic things, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'll edit that. Came to come okay. out. I know, and it's so sad. What? So it sounded like you said I'm alcoholic. Oh. So I'm just... oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said no, I'm alcoholic. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. I have I have lots of non-alcoholic drinks, <laughs> and you prefer them, right? Of course I do. <laughs> All right, viewers, if you've stuck along this long, good for you. That's right, it's like a Netflix fire on there too. Yeah. It's really nice. <laughs> this fire is brought to you by Sandra Whittington. <laughs> and, and you haven't eaten the snacks. We have. No, we have. Yeah. So I think that we're all fairly much in agreement that this is a book of great excellence and is something that is uh, should never leave the shelves of yeah. any library. Any library anywhere. This yeah. is a this is one of those books that um, if you can't read the book itself, the ideas behind it are really um, pivotal and meaningful. But the writing is beautiful. We've it all is. agreed on the writing. I was just going to flip it, Larry, flip it for you, Lorraine, and say. Um, the, the meaning, it's very meaningful, but even if you choose to not look deep into the meaning, it's a beautiful book. It's yeah. wonderful characters, it's clever and um, funny and heartfelt, and yeah, really, it's lovely. Well, obviously, the second time I'm reading it now, I have another another view of it, mm -hmm. and it's gotten much deeper. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think this is one of those books that can always, every time you read it, you would yes. probably pick out more. Mm -hmm. That's the way I feel about the book. Like I, I know that this, I will never let it go. So if any, if it's banned from everywhere, I have my copy. Okay. Um, but if I'm ever thinking I have nothing to read, what will I read? I would probably just pick this book up and start reading it again. Yeah. 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 Also because I forget things a lot, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I always enjoy it. So yeah. So we will end that here. We hope all your reading dreams and adventures continue to come true, and we'll bring you part part two of East of Eden sometime or other. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Bye.